Hello, welcome to the World Cafe Podcast. This podcast has been designed with curated content that centers on the power of words. Can we really do anything without speaking? Can we really do anything without the agency of words? Yes, that is what this podcast is all about. And I am your host, Amakri Isobwe, your neighborhood word trader. I believe in the power of words, for it is the unit of creation. I trade in words to profit my world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good everything. How are you doing? Beautiful. I'm fine where I am. Mm, back in that space again welcome to the world cafe live show yes you know how we say it on the show this is the space where we come in to lean on one another yes to you know glean from our experiences i've forged that path of positivity yes i am here again with a wonderful personality you can see it on the screen blessing the opera singer and her journey yes you heard me right a nigerian opera singer Pavarotti in the making, if you want to say. Well, I know you want to see her. She's an amazing personality and she has this amazing story to share with you. I'll bring her on now. Enough, 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 enough. And there she is. Hi, Blessing. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. Welcome. Welcome. So how are you where you are? I know you're somewhere in the US. What's it like there? What's the weather today? Um, I haven't been outside since morning. I've been indoors, but yeah, we're in summer and it's pretty hot, but I like it because it kind of reminds me of Nigeria weather. Okay. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine. Beautiful. You are welcome to the World Cafe. You know, uh, before I brought you on, I was just telling my audience, you know, our blessing the opera singer. She's an opera singer. And, you know, within the space, this space, I mean, Nigeria, when you hear an opera singer, it's like, no, we're supposed to be talking about <laughs> maybe something like reggae, Fuji, or, you know, dance or something. But you mean an opera singer? Say, yes, she's an opera singer. And I'm going to allow you, you know, do the introduction. Who is Blessing Ago? Let's get to meet you. Okay. My name is Blessing Oluma Ago. Um, I'm a graduate student at the University of Notre Dame in the sacred music program. I'm currently doing my master's degree in sacred music. I'm from Imo State, Nigeria, Umunoha precisely, in Mbitori local government mm. area. I grew up in wow. Nigeria, studied in, okay. um, I was born in Abo Delta State, and I did my primary and secondary school in Abo. Then I gained admission mm. to study music at the University of Nigeria, Soka. Okay. So I did my first degree and I did my diploma in music also before I gained admission to do my master's degree in the United States. Now, when you say sacred music, help us understand because the minute you say <laughs> sacred music, it's like, is there something on sacred about the other? So what is sacred music now? <laughs> I know when people hear sacred, they only think about church. Yes, of course, we, mm-hmm. have, we have to do church music. We have to do um, sacred songs. But then we... We also have to do other courses, like courses okay. in theology, hymnology, mm-hmm. studies about hymns, and you know, even mm-hmm. the early church and all the composers, church composers, and Western composers. And but we also do other um, music in contemporary, contemporary, not fully contemporary music, but we do a uh, musical theater. Like I'm a voice okay. student and I take courses in, you know, I have songs in musical theater. I have art songs. I also mm-hmm. included Nigerian songs too, Nigerian folk songs in my performances. And then we do the classical and we do opera productions also. So it's all encompassing. It's a, it's a, a very wide, um, you know, variety of different courses that make up the sacred music. So when people hear sacred now, music, they just think about church alone. But because of those courses, we take that. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you wanted to say something? No, no problem. No, no, go, go on, go on. Okay, I was going to listen to your question. <laughs> all right then. So I, I want to find out how did this all begin for you? Because the way you're saying it is like you enjoy what you're doing. So 
therefore you, you you discovered it somewhere sometime so how did it when did it all begin for you um i remember singing when i was eight i remember joining the children's choir i loved singing right from childhood and i loved to dance and art too so i was all about the art and i just loved entertainment okay. i started singing in school and then i joined the school choir and um joined the church choir i had you know i had our choir master then tell me how good my voice sounded and the reverend mm. sister sister perpetua ike who also had me sing and she was a music graduate at the time okay. um she was working in my church in abo st columbus catholic church All so right. she she groomed me and you know taught me some things about music about singing so i wasn't mm. just the ordinary singer that would sing in the choir i became intentional with it because i had a mentor and someone who was there to teach me how to do it the right way I okay. wanted to study law initially although I was doing my music and you know singing here oh. and there mm-hmm. but when I got to my senior secondary school I just knew that the only thing I wanted to do was sing and I decided to study music which was a very rational decision at the time because I made that decision in like SS2 okay you know and I got a scholarship for my parish priest then Father Patrick Isiche to do my diploma in University of Nigeria and my parents supported so that was how it started and <laughs> finished my diploma and then I did direct entry did my degree and here I am in the United States here I am here you are <laughs> wonderful I like that so w- what has been your challenges I-, I-, I mean embracing music your parents yes they they didn't kick against it and all that but I want to believe you you had some challenges what are these challenges and how did you sum up them yeah i had a lot actually and it i think challenges don't stop they just keep coming in different forms and shapes you just have to learn how to deal with them Mm. um growing up the challenge then was indecision i wasn't sure of what i wanted to do with the music i knew it was a passion i knew it was something i loved to do but you know in some schools they don't teach you how to make money from your passion so mm-hmm. you just have to, you know, learn from people you look up to or read about these. Or some people will just be in the entertainment and learn how to. Maybe when they've had some crazy experiences and then they now learn, they, they learn from their experiences. Okay. But the challenges I had basically in my, in, growing up, it wasn't, I didn't have any challenges. I was just free, singing, happy, this mm. happy go lucky girl. In school, I had just a few challenges with deciding, is this what I really want to do? After graduation, do I really want to further or just look for something else to do? But then after graduating from school, then I realized that, yes, most Nigerians love classical music. But then making it a profession in Nigeria, you really have to be up on your game. You really have to be intentional because not every time you get people call you for gigs and are willing to pay you a lot of money to perform. Mm -hmm. so basically you have your select audience and even when you break through to those select audience that would pay you more there are some middlemen that would want to rip off you Mm. and then being in the music industry as a female is also challenging because you get some gigs and they pay the men more than they pay you and you do the same job so these were a few challenges i had you get invited for a gig you are supposed to be paid this amount of money. Some middleman wants to, you know, corner the money and give you half of the money or something. You go for an event and someone looks down on you even before you start singing, even before they hear you sing. You tell someone you're an opera singer, like, what is that opera singing in Nigeria? Mm-hmm. That's not possible. So these were a few challenges I had, you know. Okay. But then I, I sort of, I just found this courage from, I would say from God. And also mm-hmm. from friends and people I look up to. Because I know how to talk to people a lot. Talk to friends okay. and in my downtimes, mentors. So they encourage me. They tell me their stories. And, you know, I learn from them. And I I found a way to get through them without breaking down or without giving up. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. More or less, like, the what I say prevailing circumstances in the society with respect to equal pay and all that. Mm-hmm. were part of the challenges you faced they you were. Know, like you know just like even in the musical industry in nigeria here we, what you have stated obviously are uh, some of the th- challenges upcoming artists you know 
are, are faced with. Mm -hmm. Now, what would you call your biggest stage so far? I mean, doing this, what would you call your biggest stage? Where have you performed and like, wow, amazing. I would say um, at the University of Notre Dame, my current school, um, last mm. year, December. Um, okay, I would say last year, December and this year. Because in March, I sang okay. for Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. That would be my, yeah, I the was really excited to get to meet her. Our wonderful, our wonderful sister. Yeah, and <laughs> sing for her. But um, yeah. the biggest stage in terms of, you know, um, the orchestra, the singers, the scenario, mm -hmm. everything was at the University of Notre Dame. The okay. um, Handel's Messiah concert, because I got to sing um, two solos. I, I know that my Redeemer Levate and How Beautiful Are the Feet. That was the mm -hmm. first time I sang on a stage and with the Baruch Orchestra. And you for me, say. that was a dream come true, having a Baruch Orchestra play for me in the United States. Beautiful. And in the hall. <laughs> oh. It's called the park hall. It was a very beautiful hall, you know. So it had all the, you the know, acoustics and acoustics all that. And everything I dreamed dreamt of as a child, just, mm. you know, they were just staring at me and I'm like, is this actually happening? Yeah. So I that could, was I can imagine head. an angelic moment for you, you know, it doing was. the Handel's Messiah and mm -hmm. all that. So how do you put yourself together when you want to go on that stage how do you put yourself together mind body soul spirit how do you how do you put yourself stay with us we'll be right back hello nerds come listen to the history nerds united podcast and let's make history fun again we interview today's best authors whether they are established pulitzer prize winners or someone debuting their first book let us show you that history is not a boring class you took in high school but a place where the best stories come from and we don't just cover history. We also love to chat about true crime, biographies, memoirs, and so much more. So head on over to History Nerds United and let us introduce you to your new favorite book and learn the story behind the story. History Nerds United. Um, I, I don't know if this is okay to say. I kind of know how to multitask a lot. Like, okay. I know I have to do so many things at the same time. Even mm -hmm. why not engaging my body, just my mind knows how to just do so many things at the same time. I'm here and there and everything. And it's, a na it's a natural, it's a natural thing. For, exactly. for women, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so go on. And I think for artists, too, because you're here and yeah. you're thinking about the next and thing to there. do. And exactly. you're there. So um, I actually tried to forget about everything happening afterwards and think about that moment usually backstage i try to talk less although i'm the mm. talking type i love to communicate with people and you know but backstage i try to talk less you know taking in um, a deep breath and just mm. thinking about the song going through it in my mind but at the same time not thinking too much so i don't get nervous because no matter how you try, at least climbing on that stage, I know some artists would just, you know, just be nervous a little something. bit. Yeah, before mm. <laughs> before you start singing. But mine happens not so often, depending on the stage and depending on the song. If it's something, a song I know very well, a song mm -hmm. I'm comfortable with, I can even be talking with someone backstage before I go into the stage. <laughs> if it's something I know very well. But if it's okay. a new piece and something very technical and... I know that I just need to put in my all into this and it takes a while for me to get into that. I just sit down, not talk to anyone, mm -hmm. take it, take deep breaths and then think about the song and think about all the expressions and all the, you know, the things I've done in my practice room and how to just bring them to life without any distractions in my mind. So it kind of varies depending on the performance. There are some performances I have to dance, like when I sang for Chimamanda Adichie. Mm -hmm. It was spontaneous, like everything just happened. I didn't think about the first step to take or the first move because it was something mm. in me as an African, yeah. as a Nigerian. We know how to sing and was it dance. More of, and... Was it more of the choral or the opera aspect? No, it was more of the choral. I sang All a folk right. song, an Igbo folk song okay so it was very interesting and so i didn't have to go through all those taking a deep breath and breathing mm. in because 
I didn't engage much of my, you know, diaphragm and doing this and doing that because it the wasn't the punk opera. Yeah, yeah, the professional, the professionalism was not so much for you because it, it felt like you were you were somewhere in the village just, you know, doing your exactly. thing. Exactly, and I was telling a story, you know, it's beautiful. It happened naturally, and so awesome. it varies depending on the performance. Good. So now, let, let, let's look at where you are. Who are your should I say, who do you look up to this period? Who inspires you within this as an universe, the opera universe? Who inspires you, male, female, in doing what you do? Um, I have so many of them I look up to. I have the okay. classical singers. I have mm-hmm. um, writers, you know, like mm-hmm. Chima Amanda. I have okay. mentors, you know, like the Reverend Sister I spoke to you about. I okay. have the um, is producer of Himno Himnodia, Mommy is in okay. And then, you know, I have Ruth Opbara, she's a professor in Colorado State University. Okay. Then also Enya, Enya, I don't know if you've heard of Enya, Yani. These who, are, who are you talking about? Did you did are you talking about the late the, the, the Enya, the, you know Celt, the lady? The, the, the Celt I call her the Celtic pr- priestess. You know, the, way she, she goes, the way she goes yeah. about her sounds. She's in a different world. And <laughs> no, she is. In I a different always, universe. always like to be in Enya's universe. I don't know wherever she is, but I just want to be there. <laughs> no, her, her music sort of calms me down. That's true. Me focused. And Enya and true. Yanni inspire me a lot. Ah, I actually listen to them more than I listen to classical music. Uh, they, do, they do classic quite all right. But in my opinion, they take it into their domain as in Thank their you. personality and they express that music from within the way they feel it so they really don't follow the rule the classical rules Thank and all you. that you know and beautiful what about and i don't know let, 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 let me ask do you listen to andrea bocelli i i do love andrea bocelli yes i love him i love his voice mm-hmm. <laughs> i love his voice but one thing about Enya is i just feel she makes the ordinary extraordinary you she's know, in the world of her own yeah just, let's let's leave her there it's <laughs> and goddess, exactly it. so <laughs> so th- and i think that's what music is as much as yes we need to know the rules because mm-hmm. life is what happens while we plan but you need to make this plan so you are intentional so you have a yeah. purpose so even if yeah. it doesn't work out the way you plan it at least yeah. you you made a plan yeah you know i don't think those rules should always apply, especially when you get to a particular point in your career where you know that you are close to being a maestro. You know mm. all the rules. But then, what about you, your person? I think your music should, you know, um, your music should show us who you really are. It shouldn't just be all about exactly whatever you learned you over the years. Mm-hmm. Yes, it should be. People should look at you and read you through your music. Beautiful. So that is why I just I just love Enya. <laughs> now you said something. Uh, you also act, as in you 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 are into the acting too, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. Now I, 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 let me ask this because lately, say the last twenty plus years, we see a lot of uh, composers. They collaborate with uh, movie directors to produce original scores. You know, sounds like. Uh, people like Hans Zimmer, Enya, Andrea Bocelli and the likes, when you watch movies like The Gladiator, Inception, uh, just name them, Lord of the Rings, they they, they, they are part of these movies. They, they bring their, their creativity to play. Do you, by chance, see yourself doing such a thing in the future, like original scores, particularly with maybe Nigerian or African movie directors i look forward to doing that i'm actually speaking to one director lately because although before i left nigeria i i sang in about two or three movies Mm -hmm. yeah but i actually look forward to creating my own story and my own music in a movie okay you know i if i have the time i would love to you know study a little about film music Mm. because Yes, it's okay to have the talent, but sometimes it's 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 very important for you to actually learn about something, you know, learn from the best, learn from people who know it. So even if you yeah. have the talent, you would apply it 
yeah. you know well yeah. and all that so it's something i look forward to doing it's something i want to do it's something i did as an amateur back home okay. <laughs> but so i look forward to doing it professionally doing it. yes amazing amazing i know th- thank you so much blessing for taking out this time to do this uh on this show guys who've been discussing with blessing ago i call her the opera singer for a reason you know i stumbled on her story and i was like no we need to bring this voice on this show so that i mean my audience will hear and be inspired by her story recently something happened to you uh thank god for you know deliverance and all that i what caught me when I was away going through that story, the first thing you did was when you fully recovered was to just open your mouth and sing and say, thank God I can still sing. Tell me, <laughs> why was that so, so, so important? <laughs> Tell me. Okay. Um, let me recap. Even before I regained consciousness, when it first mm. happened, yeah. because I... It happened so fast. That is how accidents happen. Yeah, I saw but the in, car. But in the ambulance, I mean, yeah. I was sitting in the passenger side. So it came directly stay. at me. Yeah. So while I was in the ambulance, I was singing. I wasn't mm. singing out, of course. I was just singing in my mind. Be still my soul. Because that's a song I play whenever I'm either um, unsettled or nervous or, you know. Mm. But in the hospital, when I <laughs> when I tried to sing... You couldn't. I, 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 I just wanted to make it sound just to make sure I could sing because yeah. you know, hearing that I had multiple liver lacerations was scary. Mm. But then I'm like, no matter what happens to me, even if I have a broken leg or something, if I can sing, I'll be fine. Because I that's love, the best I way that. I communicate. That is the only way I express my emotions and reach out to people and just let people into. Um, my your, your my, world my word exactly so mm. when i sang and i'm like okay the voice is still there <laughs> that was more like a relief but i'm like whenever you guys discharge me from this office that's fine i can sing and that's the most important thing and then the it's next beautiful. thing i wanted to do was to walk i'm like can i take a walk they're like oh we don't know if you can but you can try i'm like okay mm. let's try it <laughs> mm. Mm. so there are so many things running through my head then but I, I was just looking forward to recovery and giving thanks to God for everything because I just knew I was going to be fine. Beautiful. So singing Beautiful. is something I, I love to do. I tell people I'm, I don't love to sing. I am music. It's a part of me. It's mm. part of my essence. It's you were why born, I leave. I was born, born to, to do this. this. <laughs> <laughs> I came into this world for this. <laughs> this is the reason why I'm here, guys. Amazing. <laughs> Blessing. We're so happy for you. Thank God for recovery. Thank God for your healing. Thank God for what you do. It is our earnest desire and prayer that you will not just do it, you would as in complete it, you would finish it because yeah. imagine looking at you talk and it's clear this woman just wants to leave because of singing. So please just give me the stage. Let me just sing away, <laughs> you know. Thank you for taking this time, you know. Before I let you go, I know you have other things to catch up with. What What's that word you want to say to, I mean, people out there who are struggling with their about their dreams and aspirations and all that what's that word you want to say to them um i just keep moving keep doing what you're doing and keep learning and evolving Mm. because it is sometimes people feel comfortable doing what they are doing the same thing over and over again Mm -hmm. without actually evolving Mm. it's good to learn even when you are good at something Knowledge yep. is power. A hundred year old man would tell you that he still reads the newspaper, he still reads books to learn mm. and gain knowledge. So keep moving, keep improving, keep evolving. Don't stop learning. Some people will say one day, one day it will pay off. Yeah, definitely it would. But yeah. you just have to stay consistent because you don't know when it will happen. So stay consistent. Mm. Don't stop dreaming big because. Mm every dream it's achievable so just keep doing what you're doing guys you heard her consistency is the rule of the game 
-hmm. don't stop keep doing it keep growing keep evolving keep learning because it's all about time you know line upon line precept upon precept here and there before you know it you are there my blessing thank you so (laughs) much thank you so much guys we need to let her go but you know how we say it on the show this is the space where we come to lean on one and other's experience to forge a path of positivity and you just heard from blessing i mean our opera singer one of these days maybe we 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 we, we will call her you know on that show and she just comes and just she will do her thing for us Mm-hmm. And I know she won't say no to that. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you so much. Guys, we need to let her go now. Till we come your way again. My name is Amakri. Amakri is away. Bye for now. Bye. <laughs>